have some trucks starting to make their way into the parade ground now. Well, you couldn't get anything more different from the Porsche GT3 or GT2 to a, a, a little Cub Scout International. And Binders Club of New Zealand, they really support Wheels at Wanaka, so they get their own parade. And this is everything to do with International Harvester, one of the biggest corporations in the world at, at, at the time, until its spectacular demise. But a uh, very, very... Uh, very, very well represented in New Zealand, of course. Um, international tractors, international trucks, uh, and everything in between. So you'll see a real, a really good range of international harvester here at Wanaka this weekend, and we're very pleased to welcome the binders into the ring to display a, a great variety of, of, of trucks, and we might get a few tractors even, I don't know, because that's all part of the binders club as well. I love the um, the way that they've been lovingly restored, as we said before, to preserve that uh, that history that you've you've spoken about, Alan. So, looking like Saturday here at uh, at Wheels at Wanaka, lots of wonderful supporters from Three Parks and more. We'll run through some of those uh, those sponsors very shortly as we continue to see the uh, the binders down under all international. Harvester trucks, tractors and crawlers making their way into the, the Highlands Parade Grand now. Straight now the, um, the port truck from all the way down from Hamilton. It's amazing what comes to Wanaka from all over New Zealand. And uh, entries are all the way from Wangarei right down to Bluff and everywhere in between, all coming to Wanaka for Easter. And you will not see a better display of international harvester anywhere anywhere in New Zealand, probably anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, they call themselves. Just in front of us here, one of the, uh, the original sort of service vehicles by the looks of it. Yes, the International Harvester Dealership through New Zealand was uh, a huge dealership organisation and they used those C1100 trucks as the service trucks for the mobile mechanics, the field mechanics and uh, branches all over New Zealand supporting what they had a huge market share across machinery and trucks and, uh, and a lot of those vehicles living on today, celebrated by the people that love International Harvester. For, for my uh, knowledge, um, what did International evolve to, into? Did, did, who, who took them over? Where, where did the name go? Well, it was a very, very... It was one of the biggest corporate collapses uh, in history, and Case ended up taking over the tractors, so it's Case IH now. And then the trucks are still going. They they ended up being <laughs> they they ended up being split up. The whole company was split into, into pieces because International Harvester made everything from fridges to to heavy trucks to heavy bulldozers. And so um, it's uh, it, it was a bit of a shame when it when it um, when it failed. It just got so big that it um, eventually collapsed. But um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful to see them here, and wonderful, wonderful to see how preserved they are. Look at the, the porters have done a, a tr tremendous effort with that, and they're out there on the earth moving as well with their scrapers. Um, so porters from Hamilton, the Winter and Sons from Kaiapoi that are big supporters of the event with the beautiful International Eight Wheeler. Look at that Baker Construction Structure down from yeah. Cambridge. Wow, big supporters. Of wheels at Wanaka from the North Island. It's it's the the passion that um, these companies and these operators have had, though, you know, and we see it over in the earth moving machinery as well. The passion to maintain and preserve that history, and then put the effort and the time and the money into actually restoring and and doing this is is just a huge commitment, but a wonderful, wonderful thing to have, right? And you're going to see it all day today. Um, you're going to see it from from the cars, the tractors, the trucks and everything in between, you're going to see that passion that everyone has got for wheels and it's, it, it's, a, it's a real celebration and having an event like this means that these vehicles can be celebrated. Stephen Shearing contracting entry, I mean that's got to, when you talk about the unfortunate 
um, demise there before. That's kind of toward the end of the era, more or less, isn't it? That's uh, that, that, the last of the era, that, that era, yes, indeed. Some young ones up the front there. Welcome. Enjoy. Give them a nice round of applause, folks, while they make their way around the Highlands Parade Ground here. Biders down under all international harvester trucks, tractors, mainly just trucks that we have here at, uh, at the moment. And some of them beautifully, beautifully restored. Don't forget the tractor and truck pull action happening just behind us, over the hill there, round one. <laughs> They're starting to gradually make their way, Murph, out of the, the parade ground or out of the, uh, the arena now. Some classic cars from 1950 to 1990 about to, to join us here very shortly. Don't forget, of course, you want to check out the earth moving pit as you, as you wander around as well. Down in the direction of the pine trees, as Alan said before, and the, uh, the Terracat machines were about half or nearly toward the end of their, of their show there. And we can see the, uh, the steam engines firing up over there, warming up the boilers over the back. Al, we're not sure of variety and we're going to go from international harvester, binders down under. It's like a normal car, it just goes anywhere. It would be a little bit hard riding though with those hard wheels, I'm sure. No, no, it's got spring, good springs, and yeah, you get up to 70 k's an hour, you're not doing 120 or something. It's good. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Jono, thank you. Pulling up in front of us right now is uh, one that is for sale. Murph, come on, jump in. I think you're about oh to go for a ride goodness. in Brutus. A barn find, a 1962 International. Are you going to drive or are you going in the passenger seat? What are you doing oh, here? I have no idea. Jump in the, jump in the well, other you'll side. You'll let me drive, are you? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, okay. Right, he does. In. He does, folks. For yeah, uh, he's speak. got the right license. We do need to tell you that. So um, hasn't used it much, but Murph does have the right class license. Okay. Can you kind of commentate and? I'm off. You're off, mate. This has got an original twenty thousand eight hundred miles on it. Left hand drive. It? Beautiful. And it's for sale. I think. How much? Name your price. 50 bucks. <laughs> so originally done by Navy, there's a maker's plate here on the dashboard. In September 62 it was brought in and um, used by the deep freeze project at the Christchurch Airport. Um, run around Christchurch doing all the errands for the Scott Base supply. And then uh, sold to a farmer in Marshalls when it retired. Uh, one of two in the country. The other one was sold to Doug Hood.